Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to look at how GCP Workload Identity Federation works. This is a powerful cross-cloud security pattern and an important concept for modern cloud architectures. And using this feature, you can securely connect GCP resources to non-GCP environments like EV2S. Let's start by discussing why we even need GCP Workload Identity Federation. So first of all, multi-cloud is the new normal. Companies aren't just running in a single cloud platform. And because of a variety of reasons, either due to regulatory reasons or legal reasons, or maybe they just want to reduce their reliance on a single cloud platform, companies are running workloads in AWS, GCP, Azure, Oracle, or Dibaba, and multiple cloud platforms, right? And so whatever be the reason, these environments need to talk to each other. So that's the primary driver for, for this. But here's the problem. Traditionally, when we need to connect cloud environments, we have been using the long-lived credentials. So it could be your AWS access keys or GCP service account keys. And in many of these cases, these tokens, long-lived tokens, are used and stored and totally forgotten. Then that creates two risks. One is the issue of data security if there is a leak of that credential. And second, you lose accountability. So if that credential is used, you don't really know who used it. And this is not a hypothetical scenario, right? This is a major attack vector. And as organizations go multi-cloud, the likelihood of this kind of attack only grows. So before I show you how workload identity filtration works and how it can solve our problem, let me show you the setup without federation first. That And you might be already familiar with this common pattern of connecting services cross cloud with long lived credentials. But imagine you're a developer and you want to connect uh, AWS Lambda function with a GCS bucket living in a GCP project. So I'm logged into my GCP project and here is the demo GCS bucket that I have created. I have created an object within this bucket and this is just a text object which says, uh, hello, I am an object in Google Cloud Bucket. Now, um, I have also created a service account. Um, and uh, if you, if I see, if I show you the permissions in the GCS bucket, you can see that that service account has object viewer permissions to this bucket. So that means it can view all objects within this bucket. And uh, I've also created a service account key which is our long lived credential for the service account. And as you can see from here, the expiry is 9999. It's pretty much long lived and uh, set to never expire. Now on the AWS side, I have created a Lambda function and, um, and um, I've also put the code for the Lambda function. It's pretty simple code is extracting the credentials for the service account and uh, the service account itself is part of the environment variables, but uh, and then the code is using these credentials to make a call to get uh, the object from the bucket. It's a pretty simple code. And as you can see in the environment variables, I have manually copied and pasted the, the service account credentials. So these credentials are living in the environment variable. And um, I mean, let me quickly test this code for you to see if it's working. You can see that it's it's it's, it's um, using the service account credentials to get the object um, from the bucket. So this setup using long-lived credential credential keys definitely works, but it is insecure because now you have a long-lived credential sitting inside an environment variable in your Lambda function, and anyone who has access to it can use it, and so you have lost both security and accountability using this design. Now, let's see how we can create a secure design for cross-cloud connectivity using workload identity federation. The first thing that we need to do here is we need to create a workload identity pool in the GCP project. And what is a workload identity pool? Think of it like building a security trust bridge between your AWS account and GCP project. On one side of the bridge, the AWS STS service creates a identity information in the form of STS tokens. GCP then takes these AWS identity and says, okay, I trust you, but only if it matches certain rules. And that's where the attribute mapping comes in. The attribute mappings translate AWS identities 
like the role name in the ARN into a GCP identity. Okay, so let's create our workload identity pool in our GCP project. So I'm in the GCP console and I'll click on workload identity pools and I'll click on create pool and give this pool a name. And in the providers, I will add AWS as my provider, provide the provider name and add in the account ID for the AWS account. Now, um, in terms of like the attributes, this is where uh, we need to provide attribute mappings to map our AWS identities to GCP. This is very important because later on when we give access to our resources, we will need to use the same attribute mapping. So here notice that the Google.subject is mapped to assertion.arn, meaning the AWS ARN that is uh, uh, from, from where the request is being made. Also notice that you have an opportunity here to provide conditions to further restrict which identities from AWS can access this. By default, all identities um, are allowed. So we're gonna go with that for this demo, but for security purposes, feel free to uh, curate a specific set of conditions for your use case. Um, so finally, I'll click on create and uh, it will take some time, but uh, as you can see, now my pool is created and uh, I'm gonna click on this grant access button at the top, which gives me the opportunity to download the configuration file for this workload identity pool. And in my Lambda configuration, I'm gonna provide this configuration file for my Lambda to be able to use these credentials to log into GCP. Okay, let's update the AWS side of the configuration now. So in our Lambda function, the first thing that we need to do is we need to store the configuration file for workload identity federation in a local JSON file. So that's what I've done here. I've copied and pasted the configuration details and stored it in a local JSON file in the Lambda function. Then I also need to create two environment variables, one called Google application credentials. This one needs to point to the location of the configuration JSON file and the other for Google Cloud project. Then I also have my Lambda code here, the updated Lambda code. And this is a pretty simple code where we are calling the google.auth uh, module. And uh, pretty much everything related to workload identity federation is happening by default here. All I'm doing is I'm calling the google.auth the default uh, API. And this is automatically picking up the AWS credentials that is tied to this Lambda function and exchanging those credentials for a GCP identity. Then I'm using these credentials to call the Google Cloud bucket, right? Um, and I'm going to test this function now, but I already know that this is going to fail. And as you can see, it failed with the error that uh, storage objects get access is not permitted, right? And the reason for this is there is a key piece of information that is still missing as part of this demo, which is enabling authorization. For enabling authorization, I will go to the GCS configuration in my GCP project. I will click on permissions and as you can see, currently the GCS bucket does not give any permissions to the principle for workload identity pool. But what is the principle for workload identity pool? To find that out, we'll need to go into the identity pool that we created and we'll copy the IAM principle ARN. Now, this is where the attribute mappings we did earlier become very important. As we need to provide the subject attribute value based on our mappings. And if, and if you recall, the attribute mapping for subject value that we provided was assertion.arn, meaning the ARN of the AWS identity making this request. So let me copy and paste that ARN from AWS right here. Now, this ARN is the assume role ARN. The CSM IAM role demo is the IAM role attached to Lambda. And CSM Lambda demo is the name of the Lambda function. So with that done, I will now assign a role here of the storage viewer to this identity or the object viewer. Click on save. And with my policy now updated, let me go back to my Lambda function and test if this works. And voila, we have our Lambda function now able to connect to the GCS bucket without any long-lived credentials. So instead of hard coding a service account key, GCP issues short-lived auditable credentials on the fly. 
the benefit no long lived keys sitting around no forgotten credentials and every request is traceable back to who assumed the aws role that's the foundation of identity filtration trust based on exchange not static secrets thanks for watching